Tom Diddy Combs has been arrested after being indicted by a grand jury in New York that's according breaking news tonight Sean Diddy Combs has been arrested in a Manhattan hotel this evening after a grand jury indicted the music mogul Sean Diddy Combs has been arrested in New York City NBC News reports citing a person with knowledge of the investigation once a music mogul now entangled in a web of scandals Diddy's world is unraveling with a shocking arrest, trial, and accusations that have rocked his empire, this gripping saga exposes the dark side behind the fame. Dive into the unraveling of a legacy. What went down, Sean Diddy. Combs headed to jail Tuesday to await trial in a federal sex trafficking case that accuses him of presiding over a sordid empire of sexual crimes protected by blackmail and shocking acts of violence. The music mogul is charged with racketeering conspiracy and sex trafficking. The indictment against him lists allegations that go back to 2008. He's accused of inducing female victims and male sex workers into drugged up, sometimes day-long sexual performances dubbed freak-offs. The indictment also refers obliquely to an attack on his former girlfriend, the R&B singer Cassie, that was captured on video. Not guilty, Combs told a court, standing to speak after expressionlessly listening to the allegations with his uncuffed hands folded in his lap. After the U.S. Magistrate Judge Robin Tarnofsky declined to grant him bail, Combs took a long swig from a water bottle, then was led out of court, turning toward family members in the audience as he went. Mr. Combs is a fighter. He's going to fight this to the end. He's innocent, his lawyer, Mark Agnifilo, said after court. He plans to appeal the bail decision. The Bad Boy Records founder is accused of sexually abusing and using physical force toward women and getting his personal assistance, security, and household staff to help him hide it all. Prosecutors say he also tried to bribe and intimidate witnesses and victims to keep them quiet. Simply put, he is a serial abuser and a serial obstructor, Assistant U.S. Attorney Emily Johnson told a court. Agnifilo acknowledged Combs was not a perfect person, saying he'd used drugs and had been in toxic relationships, but was getting treatment and therapy. The evidence in this case is extremely problematic, the attorney told the court. He maintained that the case stemmed from one long-term consensual relationship that faltered amid infidelity. He didn't name the woman, but the details match those of Combs' decade-long involvement with Cassie, whose legal name is Cassandra Ventura. The freak-offs, Agnifilo contended, were an expansion of that relationship and not coercive. Is it sex trafficking? Not if everybody wants to be there, Agnifilo said, arguing that authorities were intruding on his client's private life. Prosecutors said in court papers that they had interviewed more than 50 victims and witnesses and expect the number to grow. They said they would use financial, travel, and billing records, electronic data, and communications and videos of the freak-offs to prove their case. Combs was arrested Monday in Manhattan, roughly six months after federal authorities raided his luxurious homes in Los Angeles and Miami. A conviction on every charge it would require at least 15 years in prison with the possibility of a life sentence. The indictment describes Combs as the head of a criminal enterprise that engaged or attempted to engage in sex trafficking, forced labor, interstate transportation for purposes of prostitution, drug offenses, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and obstruction of justice. Combs and his associates wielded his power and prestige to intimidate and lure women into his orbit, often under the pretense of a romantic relationship according to the indictment. It says he then would use force, threats, and coercion to get the women to engage with male sex workers in the freak ops, elaborate and produced sex performances that Combs arranged and recorded, creating dozens of videos. He ensured their participation by procuring and providing drugs, controlling their careers, leveraging his financial support, and using intimidation and violence, according to the indictment. It said his employees facilitated freak-offs by taking care of tasks like travel and hotel arrangements and stocking them with such supplies as drugs and baby oil. The events could last for days, and Combs and victims would often receive IV fluids to recover from the exertion and drug use, the indictment said. During the searches of Combs' homes earlier this year, law enforcement seized narcotics, videos of the performances, and more than a thousand bottles of baby oil and lubricant. 
according to prosecutors. They said agents also seized firearms and ammunition, including three AR-15s with defaced serial numbers in his bedroom closet in Miami. Combs' lawyer said his client didn't own the guns, noting that he employs a security company. The indictment says Combs choked, shoved, hit, and kicked people, causing injuries that often took days or weeks to heal. His employees and associates sometimes kept victims from leaving or tracked down those who tried, the indictment says. It alleges that Combs used explicit recordings as collateral to ensure the women's continued obedience and silence. He also exerted control over victims by promising career opportunities, providing and threatening to withhold financial support, dictating how they looked, monitoring their health records, and controlling where they lived, according to the indictment. As the threat of criminal charges loomed, Combs and his associates pressured witnesses and victims to stay silent, offering bribes and supplying false narratives of what happened, the indictment says. In a court filing, prosecutors accused Combs and an unidentified co-conspirator of kidnapping someone at gunpoint in December 2011 in order to facilitate a break-in at another person's home. Two weeks later, prosecutors wrote, Combs set fire to someone's vehicle by slicing open its convertible top and dropping in a Molotov cocktail. All of this, prosecutors say, was happening behind the facade of Combs' global music, lifestyle, and clothing business. Combs was recognized as one of the most influential figures in hip-hop before a flood of allegations emerged over the past year. The allegations in November 2023, R&B singer Cassie Ventura, legally known as Cassandra Ventura, filed a bombshell lawsuit against Sean Diddy Combs, accusing him of years of abuse. Cassie, who signed with Combs' label in 2005, had a turbulent on and off relationship with him for more than a decade, starting in 2007. The lawsuit, filed in federal court, alleged that Combs had uncontrollable rage and subjected her to savage beatings. It also claimed that he forced her to take drugs, made her have sex with other men, and raped her at her home in 2018 when she was trying to end the relationship. Combs' legal team strongly denied the accusations. In a shocking twist, the lawsuit was settled just one day after being filed, with the terms remaining confidential. Combs later issued a statement saying, We have decided to resolve this matter amicably. I wish Cassie and her family all the best. Love. More allegations soon followed. According to court filings, Combs had made multiple recorded phone calls to another victim of his alleged sexual abuse. During these calls, he attempted to gain her support and friendship while trying to convince her that she had willingly engaged in acts of sexual abuse. Prosecutors noted that these calls marked the beginning of months where Combs tried to bribe and coerce witnesses as more allegations against him emerged. As the expiration date for New York's Adult Survivors Act approached, which allowed victims to file civil claims regardless of the statute of limitations, two more women came forward. Joy Dickerson and an unnamed woman filed lawsuits accusing Combs of sexual abuse, beatings, and forced drug use in the early 1990s, when Combs was just beginning his rise in New York's hip hop scene. Combs' attorneys immediately responded, dismissing the allegations as false. In December 2023, yet another lawsuit was filed. This time, a woman claimed that when she was only 17 years old in 2003, Combs and two other men raped her. She alleged that she had been flown from her home in a Detroit suburb to a New York studio where she was drugged and given alcohol that rendered her incapable of consenting. The men then allegedly took turns raping her. In response, Combs posted a broad denial on Instagram stating, I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. I will fight for my name, my family, and the truth. By February 2024, a music producer filed another lawsuit, claiming that Combs had sexually assaulted him and forced him to have sex with prostitutes. The producer also alleged he had witnessed numerous illegal activities involving drugs and sex. Combs' attorneys dismissed the claims as pure fiction. Most recently, in April, a lawsuit named Combs as a co-defendant and alleged that his son Christian King Combs sexually assaulted a woman working on a yacht chartered by his father. The lawsuit filed in Los Angeles Superior Court said Sean Combs created the circumstances that led to the assault and paid to cover it up afterward. An attorney for the two men called the allegations outrageous.